Kitty, come on, kitty, come on, please, please come down, just please come down. Ugh. Ah, my kitty is stuck in a tree. What can I even do? Oh, come on, kitty. Oh, I need a hero. I need a hero. Is there a hero out there? I could really use a hero right now. Please, please, someone bring me a hero. John. Hmm. I need a hero. Sure. I'm Steven. And I'm John. And welcome to the So and So Show. Steven, if you were a superhero, what do you think your superpower would be? Oh, that's easy. Oh, yeah? Easy? Easy? <laughs> this is not an easy question. <laughs> oh, Steven. <laughs> okay, what would it be? Mind reading. What? No way. Yeah, what? definitely. Why do you think it'd be mind reading? Well, I'm smart and intuitive. I'm observant of people and like to understand where they're coming from and how they think. Plus, it would definitely be the most powerful superpower. Oh, mind reading is definitely, definitely not the most powerful superpower? I knew you'd think that. How did you do that? Maybe my powers are kicking in. Well, it is definitely not the most powerful superpower. Okay, then, what is? Super, Super strength? Did you do that again? Maybe. Okay, well, this just isn't fair. We have to figure out what my power would be. What do you mean? Well, it's, it's very obvious what your power would be, or might already be, but we have to find out mine. I have no clue what my superpower would be. 
Okay, there are a lot of options. Super strength. Mm, super speed. Invisibility. Flying. Talking to animals. Knitting at supersonic speed. What, that would come in very handy. When? <sighs> so cold. <sighs> Yeah, well, the only way we can see what power you would have is to test them out. Oh, <laughs> ah, good idea, I like the way you think. I know. Well, let's, let's get, get to it. No, no. Kids, don't try this at home. Ready? Ready. On your mark, and set, go! I didn't even... Well, it's not super speed. Ready! Ah! No! No. Wave your your fin if you can hear me. Wave your fin. If, swim to the top. Swim. swim. I've never seen a goldfish do less. Yeah. No. <sighs> okay, am I invisible now? Nope. How about now? Nope. Let's just check it. No! It's Bible story time with Kellen. No! Hey, fellas. We've been having a super powerful day so far. You think you got a story to match? Oh, do I think? <laughs> this story is so super powerful. I mean, wow. I'm listening. Great, because it's going to be a big one. In fact, today we're looking at an entire book of the Bible, specifically the book of Esther. That's right. And it looks like I got a little help for today's story. A little help to go behind the Bible. <music> Esther was an orphan Jewish girl who was raised by her cousin Mordecai in the kingdom of Persia. You see, the Jewish people had been taken captive by the Babylonians. But later, the Babylonians were defeated by the Persians. So, that's who was in charge in Esther's day. And the king of Persia was King Xerxes. Yeah, I love being king. <laughs> you know, it's just the best. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> like throw amazing parties. Which I have. Uh, over here. Yeah, just to be clear, that's not the real King Xerxes. All those people lived a long time ago, way before cameras were invented. Kellen? Yes? You're interrupting the Bible story. Can we continue? Oh, sure, of course. Hmm, thanks. One party in particular was pretty significant. Life-changing, actually. <laughs> my queen at the time, Vashti. <laughs> she wouldn't come to my party when I commanded her, so I was like, ah, you can't disrespect me, I'm the king! Took away her crown. After that, I needed to find a new queen. The king sent out a search for the most beautiful women in the kingdom, and Esther was picked as one of them. They went through a whole year of beauty treatments at the palace, and at the end of the year, the king chose Esther to be his queen. It was pretty wild. I mean, 
The Queen of Persia? Ah, <laughs> upgrade. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I knew God was with me, but I didn't tell anybody there that I was Jewish. New. <laughs> After some time, the king appointed a man named Haman to be in charge of all the nobles in his kingdom. That's right. And Haman was very proud of himself. Maybe a little too proud. He wanted everyone to fall on their knees when he walked by. But Esther's cousin Mordecai refused to bow. Haman was obsessed with himself. But I wouldn't bow because I know who my God is, the one true God. And I wasn't going to worship anyone else. But Haman really didn't like that. And when he found out I was Jewish, well, he decided he would take out his anger on all the Jews. Haman came up to me and he was upset. He said, King, there's a whole group of people who don't obey you. They, they live differently than everyone else. And I was like, what? I cannot have that. So I gave him my ring and my royal seal on it and I told him to do whatever he wanted with those people. Haman ordered for every Jew in every territory of the kingdom to be killed. Talk about an evil dude. It was not good. Letters were sent all over the kingdom that on the 13th day of the 12th month, they were to kill every single Jewish person. It was the most devastating time I ever faced. All the other Jews and I tore our clothes and wore rough cloths. We cried for days. I knew I had to talk to Esther. Mordecai wanted me to do something about it, but I felt like there was nothing I could do. No one was allowed to come before the king unless he sent for them. If I went to the king without being sent for, and if he didn't hold out his golden scepter to me, huh, then I, I, I would be killed. I knew it wasn't easy, but I told Esther, don't think just because you live in the king's palace that you will be the only Jew who escapes. If you don't say anything, then help for the Jews will come from another place. <laughs> but who knows? It's possible that you became queen for a time just like this. Esther told Mordecai to gather all the Jews in the area and to go three days without eating. She and her attendants fasted for three days as well. I told Mordecai I would go to the king at the end of the three days. Even though it was against the law, I realized it was what I had to do. Mordecai was right. What if I had become queen for this moment? I would risk my life to save my people. And if I died, then I died. That's how I saw it. Esther came into my throne room. It was a bit of a surprise since I hadn't called for her, but I was pleased to see her. So I. I don't even have the words to describe the relief I felt. Oh, I just remember thinking, I'm not getting killed. Okay, I am not getting killed. And then I remembered that I actually needed to start moving my feet and walk to him so I could do what I came there to do. <sighs> when I saw her come in, I offered Esther anything she wanted, up to half my kingdom. Whoo! <sighs> she just invited me and Haman, my right-hand man, to come to a feast that she would prepare. So I was pretty intrigued. <laughs> And you know I like a good feast. <laughs> the following evening, the king and Haman went to the feast Esther prepared. While they were at the feast, the king asked Esther again what she desired. That was my chance. I asked him to spare my people. I told him that my people and I had been sold to be killed and wiped out. Oh, 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 I was livid when I heard that. I said to her, who, who was a man who has dared to do such a thing? And where is he? I was not expecting what she said next. Esther told the king that Haman was the man who had given the order. 
The king was very angry. He had Haman taken away right then and put to death. King Xerxes put out a new order to save the Jews so that they would not be killed. I was really proud of Esther. She was brave and selfless. She risked her life to save our people. She remembered the ways of God that I taught her. To be loving and courageous, that was beautiful. We were also excited and relieved. Yes, it was amazing. We sent news out to all the Jews and everyone celebrated. Everyone was just so filled with joy. Esther risked her life to save her people. She stood up for what was right and trusted God, even though she didn't know how it was gonna turn out. I couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks. But I can say this better. This has been Behind the Bible. Whoa, Esther was so brave. Yeah. God was with her and God is with us too. So we can be brave just like Esther, even if it's not in life-threatening situations. I feel more courageous than ever. Thanks, Kellen. You bet. See ya. Well, it looks like we're getting close to the end. Can you uh, guess what I'm thinking now? You're thinking ham sandwich. How did you? Reveal the question. <laughs> Oh, uh, when have you done something you were afraid to do? Maybe you stood up for someone like Esther did, not knowing what other people would think of you. Yeah, or maybe you tried a new sport or, or shared a piece of art you made and it felt scary because you didn't know how uh, people would like it. Right, and there are times every day that we're faced with something that we might be afraid of. Yeah, but it's important to remember that we can still choose to be brave, trust God, and do what's right. Hey, maybe that's my superpower. Yes, yeah, choosing what's right no matter what the situation. Yeah, if people did that, anyone could be a superhero. Yes, I'm Justice John. And I'm Cerebral Steven. Ah. No, 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 wait. Uh, Steven the Smarty, Smarty Pants Steven. Ah. Smarty Pants Stevie Pants. Huh. No, Smart Pant, Smart Pant. Maybe and, it's just and, one and pant. This has been the so-and-so show. What if it's just one pant? Smart, sm thinking, what if, Man's, what if it's my pants? You, John's pants, Steven's pants. <laughs> no. Right. Smarty John Steven's pants. Yes! Ha! King of Hearts. I know. How are you doing this? Well, normally a mind reader never reveals his tricks, but long story short, I'm reading your mind, John. <laughs> All right, try this. Mm -hmm. Ace of Clubs. Six of diamonds. Three of clubs. Yep. Joker. Ha! Ha! I mean, I've been getting it the whole time, but this time I really got it. You know. I'm glad I put this mirror here because now I can sulk in it. I did it. 